Isn't that the song from Dingo's recording? That's right. It's called La Oracionais. It was a popular song during the revolution a century ago. I believe they once considered making it the official national anthem of Calvert. Yeah, but they decided against it. They went with Swear on the White Clothes instead. Hmm. <laughs> it is a song about the fall of the nobility and the rise of the people. In theory, an ideal fit for the freshly minted revolutionary government. Alas, there was a hint of a lingering fondness for the old kingdom in the lyrics. And they couldn't change them because the song was too well known at that point. So they went with a different tune. <laughs> we didn't come here for a history lesson, you prick. Perhaps not, but I welcome you all the same, Arkrayed. And I will extend my warmest greetings to your employees and your concierge. It's good to see you as well, Roaring Lion. I have cast that name aside. You would do well to forget it. The past is a matter of great import on this particular occasion, so I'm afraid I can't do that. And I can't forget yours either, Agnes Gramhart. You may hide under a false name, but you can't pull the wool over my eyes. <laughs> right. That would be your real name, wouldn't it? Huh. Yes, I never really thought about it before. <laughs> yes, I've been using my mother's maiden name ever since my father took up office. It's what our protection service recommended two years ago. I've just gotten used to it at this point. I was caught off guard by your father's intervention in this affair. Though I shouldn't have been surprised. He has always been a man of action. He's quick to conduct blackmail and other self-serving political decisions. <laughs> That's part of why I believed there was room for negotiation between us, but that ship has sailed. I'm sorry, what? The President of the Republic would never cut a deal with a man who wiped out an entire village. Especially when it's his people. My father wouldn't stoop to your level. I wouldn't be so sure of that if I were you. I've heard rumors that he entered into an agreement with the society. But let's put that aside. I shouldn't be driving a wedge between you and your father. Your relationship with him is fractured enough as it is. So we can leave it at that. Though I am curious as to how he merged the Epstein bloodline with his own. Ugh. Actually, he didn't really. Her grandmother was adopted, so she's not a blood relative of Epstein. You really like getting under people's skin, don't you, Dantes? Actually, what do we even call you now? Don Dantes? His Highness Prince Dantes? Or High Priest Dantes of the DG Cult? Hmm. While we're at it, let me ask you something else. Back in Aracion, it didn't seem like you knew for sure that I was your target. But that's changed now, hasn't it? Have you been waiting for me specifically all this time? Because from where I'm standing, it looks like all of this pandemonium nonsense was just a ploy to draw me in. What? Really? Your arrogance truly astounds me, boy. Bringing you here was merely one part of my grand scheme, not the focal point. My primary goal is, and always was, to create and spread pandemonium throughout the world. My ambitions lie beyond the ruined kingdom and the fallen cult. Even Armada was simply a means to an end. The day I stole this power from you, my very reason for being changed forever. I will expose the true form of this nation, as well as this continent. A world hinged on lies. And I will do so by taking the form of ultimate fear. <laughs> You're gonna do what now? Wait! Hold up. What did you mean by the day I stole this power from you? You saying you took something of Vans? What for? No way. Is that what turned the capital into pandemonium? With the Genesis as its conduit? <laughs> Precisely. It all began 11 years ago, when I received a curious report from one of our lodges. They captured a boy who was born with a demonic element. 
and they were attempting to extract it by any means necessary. The members of the DG cult were out of their minds. Not that I'm in a position to judge, of course. But to them, no idea was taboo. Anything was fair game as long as it furthered their goal to reject the existence of the goddess. Nevertheless, the vast majority of their misbegotten schemes came up empty, but on occasion, they would happen upon a gold mine. And their crowning achievement was finding the diabolic core that resided in the boy. That core possessed unspeakable power. It had no place within this realm of existence. It was a forbidden fruit that was ripe for the taking. So naturally, I seized it. I told them to hand it over, and they couldn't very well refuse the request of Calvardian royalty and their high priest. Before that day, I had no dreams nor ambitions to speak of. I led a hollow existence. But the moment I laid eyes on that core, I instantly came alive. I was drawn to its radiant beauty, and I was sucked in by its blackened splendor. I welcomed it into my body, and then I was reborn. Eventually, the cult came under fire by the society, and then it was nearly annihilated by a large-scale operation led by a famous bracer. But I avoided the fate that befell the cult. I escaped using my newly acquired demonic power. After that, I began my life anew in the Mafia. I deceived Almada's witless leader with ease, and put him to the sword. Then I gathered minions who would do my bidding, including Melchior, who hailed from the group that was birthed by my former abode. <laughs> Van... I had no idea those lost seven years were filled with so much trauma. You had a... diabolic core inside you? What even is that? You knew about this all along, didn't you? Yes, I did. I assisted with the operation that eradicated the cult. During the mission, I chanced upon Van, who had miraculously survived, yet lost the will to live. I then treated his physical and mental wounds. Four years later, our paths crossed once more, while he was wandering aimlessly after dropping out of school. <laughs> That you regret bumping into me after all the trouble I caused you from that point on. You... went through all that too, Van? Huh? Too? Sorry for not coming clean about this sooner, Katra. You ain't like me, though. You picked yourself back up and started a new life. You've even got a family. And a nice one at that. <sighs> You're right. I've got the Professor, Essie, and Yang. Who have all helped me get back on my feet. And there are others in the Institute, Artisanal District, and Vern whose shoulders I can lean on. I have many people whom I treasure dearly. But isn't that the same for you? You have many loved ones in your life who will support you however they can. Yeah. I'm thankful for all the people who have stuck by my side. And I should thank you for the long-winded exposition, Dantes. Say. If you ever considered a career in film, you'd make a half-decent narrator. You're letting those badass vocal cords go to waste. Why don't you ditch this Mafia gig and shoot for a big debut on the big screen? I'll even set you up with Gotti. Who knows? Maybe you'll land yourself a starring role in a sexy romance flick with Judith. Oh, hell no! Ridiculous. I can never return to an ordinary life in this world. Nor do I have any desire to. All I want is for this meaningless chapter of existence to draw to a close. And I will write its end myself. Come forth, Aperon! What the hell is that? That sword is covered in ominous miasma. It, 
It's those glyphs again! So you've become an undead too! That can only mean one thing. You definitely perished that day in the palace. Indeed. And of course this is not the Empire's curse at work. In order to unleash the full breadth of the Diabolic Core's power, I had to cast aside the shackles of mortality. So I put my plan into motion. First, I burned Kray to the ground, so that I could set the stage for the game in Orasion. That village made for the perfect sacrificial lamb. And like a lamb to the slaughter, you, Arkwright, the owner of this core, heard my call followed me into the city, and plunged your sword into my chest. Thanks to you, I have been reborn as an undead. And now, I wield the power to use the Genesis to unfurl pandemonium throughout the land. How could you? People's lives aren't just toys for you to play around with! You... You killed all those people, and crushed their hopes and dreams for such a stupid, selfish reason? I thought Melchior was the lowest of the low. But clearly, I was wrong! I'm sorry, Dantes. What? I'm guessing you weren't always quite this twisted. You lived a life bound by your birth. And after that, you were forced to rely on a cult of lunatics, who you wanted nothing to do with. Then your luck went up in smoke, because you met me. The core inside me changed you forever. <sighs> what happened to Kray, Dingo, and those who died in Arasion, and even Pandemonium itself? All comes back to one troublesome punk. Van, that's not... That's bullshit and you know it. This isn't your fault, Van. The world does not revolve around you, Van Arkride. I have walked this path of my own free will, and every choice I've made has been mine, and mine alone. How dare you imply otherwise? I will not stand to be pitied by the likes of you. <laughs> Once you finally breathe your last, the final factor will be unleashed. And then, the diabolic core that dwells within me will become whole and return to its true form! At long last, you will finally be mine, Empty Husk. Not if we have anything to say about it! The crap that's coming out of your mouth is as dumb as your hair, asshole! We cannot and will not overlook what you are saying about Mr. Arkwright. You take those words back! I won't stand for you calling Van an empty husk. He's a wonderful human being. And he's someone who is dear to us all! <laughs> now that I know you're beyond saving, I can take comfort in finishing you off one last time. And I'm not just doing that to get my core back. It's a Spriggan's job to take out power-hungry bastards when no one else can! <laughs> How amusing! I look forward to seeing you try! I'll take you on. Time to bring an end to this charade. Displaying details. Cobalt curtain activate. My move now. Time for a new look. Time to close in. Your turn. Ha! <laughs> 
Can't you do better than that? I travel in the night. There's nothing I can't swipe. Spring Cat at your service! It's go time! Activating drive! It's nearly time. 